here at Mobile World Congress. We're on the HP stand looking at the touchpad, which somewhat ironically, I'm not allowed to touch. However, I love it anyway. I'm totally in love with this device. It's running dual core Snapdragon processor, so it's really fast. One of the really cool things about it that they showed us is touch to share, which basically means you've got your touchpad, you've got your pre-3 smartphone, and if you want to share something, they demoed it on a web page, you literally just make the smartphone touch the touchpad, and all of a sudden that web page is on your smartphone, which I think is magical. Now this is the fruition of HP's acquisition of Palm, and you can see that they've thought really, really hard about how people are using these devices, and it kind of looks more like how you'd use a computer. So for instance, with the emails, every time you open an email, say to reply it, if you leave it halfway through, it will stay open and sit in a deck, which is a lot more how you'd use a computer, for instance. The other cool thing that they didn't actually show us, but I know about, is that it's got a context-specific keyboard. So according to the application, you can resize the keyboard and uh, it will change according to which application you're in, which I think is also very smart. So in terms of pricing, we've no idea, but it is coming summer and I'm really excited. Here at Mobile World Congress, I'm here on the underwhelming Sony Ericsson stand with the PlayStation phone, officially known as the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play phone. Now, it runs Android, so you get all the stuff you'd expect from Android, but obviously people are most excited about the games. First look, it does just look like a normal phone, but if you flick it out, you'll find the familiar PlayStation buttons, very much like you'd find on your PlayStation at home. In terms of games, they've announced that Crash Bandicoot is going to be pre-installed, and there will be 50 games available at launch, including the really big titles that you would expect. With this phone, you can play against friends, so if your friends also have this phone, you can race against each other, shoot against each other, all the things you'd expect with a gaming phone. One of the things that has upset gamers is the fact that Sony Ericsson have announced that all the games people have already bought on the PlayStation Network are not transferable to the phone, so you will have to buy everything individually. Pricing we don't have on this yet, but it's being rolled out from March, so it's starting in the US and we can expect it in the UK end of March, beginning of April. Hello, I'm here at Mobile World Congress 2011 on the Samsung stand where they're showing off the Galaxy Tab 10.1 which is the successor to their very popular original Galaxy Tab. Now what you get is a 10.1 screen, it has surround sound speakers so they're hoping to make it the ultimate entertainment device but for us the most exciting thing is the fact that it's running Honeycomb. Now this is Google's new Android tablet only operating system and this tablet has dual cores so one of the cool things you're going to be able to do is use Movie Studio which is something that Eric Schmidt demoed at his keynote on the Motorola Zoom, but it's basically something that comes with Honeycomb. And it's video editing software, you can add photos, you can add music, you can add titles, do a bit of editing, that kind of stuff. And because it's dual core, it's gonna run really nicely. Now, in terms of when you can get hold of this, it's undecided, but it is going to be exclusive to Vodafone in the UK for at least a short amount of time, possibly longer. So more details as we have them. But there you go, it's the Galaxy Tab 10.1. Here at Mobile World Congress, I'm here on the LG stand and I arrived all prepared to be cynical and horrid about this, the LG Optimus 3D, which is the world's first no glasses 3D smartphone but I kind of love it. The boring stuff is that it's a 4.3 inch screen. Underneath you'll find it's running Android operating system, so you get all the good stuff like the market that you normally get with Android. It's got dual core processors, so it's mega powerful, which it needs to be because of that 3D. On the back, you'll find two five megapixel cameras, and this means that you can record 3D, but not only that, you can obviously view the 3D on the screen. So it's got full HD recording, so you can create your own movies, and it's also got 3D apps. Now at the moment, they're mostly games. There's only a handful, I think four of them on there, but it's fun, and you can do racing games, and you can control Gulliver's Boat, and the 3D is okay. It's probably a gimmick. It's probably, it would only be exciting for about a week, but it's kind of cool, and yes, I do kind of love it. Mobile World Congress went heavy on the phones, not a total shock, and also sported a glut of tablet news. Over the past week, we've brought you previews of some of the most exciting products, but there's a few other things that we're pretty sure you absolutely, definitely should know about. 
First up, Steve Ballmer made some announcements about the free Windows Phone 7 update slated to arrive and unspecified later this year. When it does arrive, it will come with multitasking. You'll be able to hold down the back button and have the running apps pop up at the bottom of the screen, allowing you to reopen them instantly. This would be more exciting if there was a Spotify Windows Phone 7 app. Microsoft also previewed the integration of Windows Phone 7 devices into the allegedly controllerless Kinect gaming console. No word on anything as concrete as launch plans, but you can see how much fun these two girls are having pounding this poor boy into oblivion via the medium of Windows Phone 7 and Dodgeball on Kinect. Samsung launched a load of products, but their flagship mobile, the Samsung Galaxy S2, is surely the most super sweet. Dual core, gingerbread toting, 8 megapixel 1080p video recording, and a whole host of enterprise features, it still manages to bag the thinnest smartphone title, thanks to being a tiny 8.9 millimeters thin. Like I said, sweet. Finally, Google's Eric Schmidt previewed Movie Studio on Motorola's Zoom tablet, which is likely to come preloaded on all tablets running Honeycomb. Much like Apple's iMovie, it'll allow you to edit videos in a simple timeline format, adding music, transitions and titles, as well as one-click YouTube uploading. So there you have it, Mobile World Congress wrapped up for another year. How freaking exciting. Want more? Go to www.fraculus.com forward slash follow for a glut of RSSE, iTunesy, podcasty, subscription-y options. <coughs>